Hi, everybody. I've been traveling again, but I'm here. Um, always let me know if there's specific questions you have. I'm here to help you find simplicity on the far side of complexity of working with challenging cases and working with typically developing kids. So kids and adults, it's not just about, you know, learning to work with kids and adults with behavioral learning, socialization challenges, although that's a big piece of what we do. But when you learn that, you then learn how to draw it back and understand why this work, this approach, this lens, and these skills that you're developing and have developed allow you to help a typically developing child and family stay on course or watch for a little, I call them like little smoldering fires before they become big fires. We want to encourage and support healthy traject the healthy trajectory of development, physically, cognitively, academically, emotionally. That's what we are here to do, not just put out fires, but absolutely that as well. Not by chasing deficits, not by treating symptoms, not by waiting for deficits to appear, but by knowing more, not necessarily doing more, knowing more, building a team, understanding how to put together a team, and knowing how to use the clinical tools, mentoring tools, educational brain-based tools to better support deflected development or healthy typical development. Now, what I want to talk about today is case history, case history considerations and gold in the case history and how to expand your understanding of taking a case history. So often I see that doctors get really hung up on deficit when taking a case history. Now I understand that because how are we taught to take a case history? We have to start, and I encourage you to start this way as well, and we teach you this in the focus certification approach, is you start with the, the concern. You start with the pain point. You start with the presenting deficit or, or, or challenge. So your kid is having, you know, you are having back pain. Well, tell me about that back pain. Tell me when did it start? Have you ever had it before? What makes it better? What makes it worse? We understand this in the musculoskeletal realm, and particularly with adults. We have to look for things, red flags. We need to know if we need to work with others. All that stuff is important. The same thing goes for um, working with, you know, cognitive and neurodeflective challenges. So if your child has hyperactive behavior, uh, well, when did that start? When did you first notice it? Um, when, you know, when does it get better? When is, when is he most hyperactive? When are you seeing this behavior most consume his life or your family? Is it worse at school? Is it worse at home? Um, is it worse when you're in public and there's a lot of social demand or when you go to birthday parties? Your child is aggressive and, and acts out physically. When does that happen? When does it seem to go be decreased and not be as much of a factor? Um, when did it start? When does it get worse? You know, all of these things just like in the musculoskeletal realm, we have to start with the pain point, the presenting symptom, and we need to ask all of these questions around the cognitive behavioral educational challenge as well. Your child is having trouble with reading. They're, well, what type of trouble are they having with reading? Do they lose their place when they're reading? Do they not retain, they can read okay, seeming to do okay with speed, but they have trouble with comprehension. When did that start? When did you first get that report from school? Was it third grade? Was it fifth grade? You know, we need to ask these questions. So we start with the primary concern. We expand based on what we know about neurodevelopment. And then we start asking more about early development. So then we want it. We want to understand, right, about the primary condition. And then we want to take few steps back and understand that symptoms are there, behaviors are there, challenges are there for a reason. And when we look at that basic triangle of simplicity, we understand that we have to understand a few things. One, the brain is not fully developed at birth. We know that stressors can impact our shown physical, chemical, emotional stressors are shown to impact that trajectory of development, the way the brain moves through development, and therefore the tools and skills we have to connect, engage, and learn with our from our environment and with our environment, and that there are some changes that can happen in the brain and the body, in the nervous system, in the gut, in the hormonal system, in the detoxification system as a result of the stressors that can lead to this change in the way the brain moves through development. So what we have to do is we have to be able to ask questions about brain development and about stressors and the timing of the stressors and how they may be impacting brain development.
So we ask about the questions or about the symptoms, the primary deficit, the primary thing that's brought them in. We ask all about that, not just in the musculoskeletal realm, but all about the cognitive, academic, and other socialization challenges that are, that are there as well. Then we say, okay, great, now I need to understand a little bit more about the trajectory of growth and development, or brain development, right? And so then that's when I start asking about preconception. I talk about in utero stress, talk about, you know, what was the baby, what was his position in, 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 in utero? What was birth like? What was early life movement like? How was he, how was this child, you know, did they latch? How, what was their demeanor? How did they sleep? How did they poop? Did they have rashes in early life, right? Then we move into movement development. Chiropractors, as chiropractors and probably OTs out there, we're pretty good at everything I've said thus far. You know, oh, did they crawl? Did they like tummy time? Did they um, get up and walk at what age? Here's where we start to struggle. We go into that movement realm. Now we move into the auditory, verbal, and cognitive realm. And then we have to ask the same questions there. What was his attentiveness to noise like? Was he sensitive to noise? When did you first notice that happening? At a year? Um, you know, at all of a sudden now when he's 12? Um, you know, how, how is he with receptive language? Does he seem to hear? Does he have any hearing issues? Does he hear you? right? Does he seem to like miss a lot of things or not be paying attention? Does the teacher say he doesn't pay attention in, in class when he's being spoken to? How is he with language, using verbal language, right? Then we move into the cognitive realm. See, we have to address not just movement, not just symptom, not just movement, not just preconception, not just after birth, but we then have to look at each developmental stage in the movement, in language development and communication development, in socialization and academics and cognition. We have to be able to ask appropriate questions in each of these categories to get a really good big picture, 30,000 foot view of what might be going on, what stressors may have been present, what and where we were in development, what age and what skill level were we in brain development that may have been impacted by the stressors that happened and then we can do our clinical exam. Listen, if all this sounds really complicated to you, the one thing that I want you to remember is that we can, when we know just a little bit more about the stages of brain development, how it relates specifically to what we do as chiropractors and professionals that work with kids and adults, that have gone through development or are moving through development, when we can know just a little bit more about the stages and the hierarchies of development, it makes it very simple to take a case history based on each of those stages, take a clinical exam based on each of those stages and on looking at neurological function, be able to put it all together about how does this all fit together and give the parents, here's the next logical step, Here's the clinical tools we need to do to improve communication in the nervous system, drive healthy brain development, allow for more efficient tools, and based on what I got from my case history, here is what I expect to see as a win first and a challenge first so we're not chasing symptoms. If you're listening to this now or later and you're like, hey, I wanna know how to do that, Tell me which part of this was, ooh, that was an aha moment for me, or hey, Amy, I want you to dig into this a little more, I'm totally lost, or whatever it is, because this concept right here of taking an appropriate case history based on understanding brain development and knowing what clinical tools you bring to the table so you can stay in your lane, chiropractors, OTs, and build teams together, this is gold. If you want that, if you're like, hey, I need more on this, you have to tell me because I'm here to help you help more people and I need to know exactly what you need. Um, but this should get you thinking about the case history is not just there for marketing. It's not just there to get little bits of information about the deficit. We start there. We have to change the way we ask questions around that deficit and then we have to be able to expand so we take we take we have specific questions that give us information about that triangle of simplicity brain development stressors impacting brain development and how the the timing of the stressors and how that impacts where we are in brain development and the manifested changes as a result of the stressors like subluxation, altered neurological function, breakdown in the gut, inflammatory processes. We have to understand how to put all this together. 
which we can do when we use these simple steps in understanding of the triangle of simplicity and the hierarchies of brain development. Okay, everybody, be well, do good work. Remember, there are no bad kids and no purposeless behaviors.